All right, guys, our next guest is fighting Antonio Bigfoot Silva at UFC 190. He's a former AFC K Oz and IKBF champion. He's Australia's very own Soa the Hulk Pulele, and he's joining us here on Submission Radio for the first time, surprisingly, on the audio version. Soa, welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. It's great to finally have you on the show itself. So uh, before we jump into your next fight, just wanted to go back in time a little bit for the listeners. You've been fighting since 2002, and many people may not know about the fact that you fought on Pride 28. The card was headlined by the classic Vandalay versus Rampage fight. What was your experience like in Pride? You know, Pride was, uh, you know, I think back then I had the option to either go to UFC or Pride, but I wanted to go to Pride, obviously, because I thought it was just, bigger you know bigger in in a bigger scale you know mm. a, lot, a lot of the big fighters were fighting there theodore um you know alastair was there as well and um you know all the it was just it was just a good at, good atmosphere fighting in, in front of you know 90,000 people but <laughs> uh, but yeah it's it's awesome there japan is very people in japan are very respectful and um especially to that because the whole the whole culture is martial arts stuff so no it was good it was good i loved it there you know, it's interesting because we've had everyone on the show from Bob Sapp, Shamrock to Don Fry, a lot of Pride legends on the program. And everybody that's been on the show has, has had some kind of strange and wonderful thing happen to them when fighting in Japan. Just wondering, obviously you only fought in that one Pride, but did you have any strange experiences you can share with us from fighting over there in Japan? No, nothing, nothing strange. It's, um, the people are just, you know, they're respectful in a way, but uh, they're very like... Um, total different to to the american crowd the american crowd they're very they can be nasty but uh the, J- the japanese crowd are, are very respectful and uh and you know the whole you know in 70 to 80 thousand people they'll be silent all of a sudden you do a sweep and then the crowd goes off <laughs> it goes goes crazy but if that, if that happened in america a lot of people in america don't care they just want the kind of bloodthirsty kind of thing but they just want to yeah just action 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 but in japan they're very you know very like martial artists kind of you know pride they take that you know in their pride and you know stuff but i, I loved that over there in japan and uh and if uh if it happened again i'd, I'd do it again yeah, yeah. Well, it'll be awesome. I think a lot of people will be really happy if Pride did come back. You know, listeners also may not know that you actually did have a very short stint in the UFC back in the day at UFC 79, losing to Eddie Sanchez. When you were cut from the company, did you know you would be back one day? Uh, we can imagine it would be a devastating feeling. Yeah, well, I think back then I signed a full fight deal with UFC, and um, and that was my first fight ever in the UFC. And I think I come in there unprepared. I, even though I was with a good camp, I was with Team Quest, but I, um, you know, first, uh, the first jitters, um, you know, it is true, you know, you you get, you know, in UFC, you get, uh, you know, your first fight jitters, um, everyone gets it, and uh, and I got it, but I got it really bad, I kind of, I didn't even know what, what was going on, I still can't remember what happened, actually happened, <laughs> um, so I kind of froze, which is, uh, you know, which is not really a good kind of, you know, fight card to be, you know, freezing on when you've got, uh, you know, I was on the main card and, yeah, but, uh, and then I came back to Temeco, got cut and uh, that's it. They're never to be fought, never to fight in the UFC ever again. Um, come back depressed and then I thought, you know what, I don't want to be remembered for that fight. I want to come back and I want to be remembered for, for, you know, that I came back and I, and I, uh, and I fought again and, and again and again in the UFC. And uh, so I just, you know, trained and uh, nine fights later, nine fight nine fights mm-hmm. later and nine knockouts, I uh, eventually got back into the UFC and here I am. Well, yeah, exactly right. And I mean, the streak that you acquired to get back in the UFC is very, very impressive. At any point in that streak, so did you feel like, man, I'm already on this many KOs, I've done this much. Maybe it'll never happen. Maybe I'll never get back in there because it took you quite a while to get back into the company. Yeah, it did. Like even after the four fights, you know, we hit Joe Silver up and then five fights, we hit Joe Silver up again, six fights and he (laughs) still didn't budge, seven fights and, you know, then eight fights and then the last (laughs) one was against... uh, um, Sean McCorkle and he was an ex UFC guy and, and then we then thought okay this would be a good test and then then I got past him and uh, knocked him out and so then I uh, then yeah it was uh, then eventually they gave me a shot got with a good team uh, management team uh, Paradigm their Paradigm um, 
sports management, awesome guys there, uh, and they kind of facilitated my contract with UFC, and and then then I got back in and had my first fight was in which was in Milwaukee. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of your fights before you got back in the UFC happened in Sydney against Bob Sapp. Sapp's been on our show and he gave us the impression he was sort of throwing fights near the end of his career to pay off medical bills. You obviously beat him in 12 seconds. You know, did part of you feel frustrated that you may not, that he may not have given you like a proper contest in the fight with him? And also, what did Bob say to you after the fight? Well, he had a massive cut on his top of his eye. So he, he when he came in rushing in, um, I first I, when first of all we were at the way and I thought man this guy's massive I don't, I don't want to be caught underneath him mm-hmm. and I uh, thought if this guy hugs you he'll, he'll, he'll crush you so um, I thought oh, okay well I'm just going to hit him and move so uh, the bell went and I came in and I uppercutted him twice and then left hook and then turned him and took him down and I just went as quick as I can so punched him as quick as I can but then he kind of turtled up and uh, the ref stopped it so I mean, you know, he's been through some wars. Um, I don't know what happened towards the end of his career, but, uh, you know, I still respect him as a fighter, you know, especially when he fought the Ernest Hoost back, you know, and, and that was mm. a real fight. That was like they, these guys were going to war. So, But, you know, he's, he had a good fight against Big Nog and, as well, and uh, he showed some, you know, I think towards the end of his career. I, I don't know what happened, but, you know, I fought him and that was it. Yeah, no, it's it's an interesting one, and you know he was on our show, and he seems like he's in a very good place at least, and he's quite healthy and happy. So at least that's good. He's over there in Japan doing all the sponsorships and walking around the supermarkets, and all the Japanese people are just running around after him. So I think he's still got a good thing going on over there. Now let's talk about UFC 190. You know, it's been an eventful week for you as you found out about your next big matchup against Antonio Bigfoot Silva. How did this yeah. matchup come about? Uh, my management, my management team's been working on obviously uh, not being on the Adelaide card was was a bit of disappointment because it's you know it's fight there's a fight in Australia and uh, you know I would have loved to fight fight there but uh, but then again it's Adelaide you know uh, well, what is in Adelaide? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we we have to go over there to cover that card next weekend, man. <laughs> yeah. No, you know what? I like I, I like all the states in in in, in, in Australia, but you know, but. Uh, the city but of churches yeah well hopefully these guys don't get bored over there but uh, <laughs> i'm sure there's something there for you guys you maybe take your chessboard and connect four <laughs> we'll be but, playing you know, angry birds all the, all the time kind of disappointed, didn't find that but they but they um but but ufc were obviously working on something uh, big for me and uh and i got uh, a message from audi and uh and Sayer. they're my management uh uh paradigm um man, these guys are awesome they they, they manage uh jake uh, Jake Matthews, uh, you know um, Michael Bisbee, Conor McGregor, mm. uh, Ross Pearson. So and the, the the champ as well, Chris Wildman as well. So they they got uh, they're awesome. And the good about thing about these guys, not that I'm trying to plug them, but they they look after you. They're like a you know look they're like a family. So and and, they, and it's awesome being with these guys, at Paradigm. But uh, in that, I got a message from from these guys on, on on Friday. You want the fight? And I said, yeah, cool, let's do it. And <laughs> um, and uh, usually it takes me a couple of days when I get um, when they tell me a fight, just to digest it. And then um, I didn't even get to digest it. And then Saturday morning I woke up with uh, my phone f- full of uh, probably 50 messages from different people saying, "Hey man, I, you Bigfoot, Bigfoot, Bigfoot." I was like, "What? They've already announced it already." Wow, that's crazy. And then, um, but yeah, and then, look, I think it went viral. Everyone knew about it. So, and that, so, but no, it was good. You know, I, I got messages from. You know, from Daniel Ricciardo, F1, because he's a friend of mine, and just heaps of other celebrity people oh. that hitting me up and said, "Man, can't wait for the fight. It's going to be good, and it's a good card as well." You know, Ronda Rousey's the main main event, and uh, Shogun's on there, Little Nog and Big Nog's on both on there. You know, Stefan Strew, so great card to be on. Yeah, it's a really big card. It's actually a really good matchup because, uh, you know, we frequent the forums like Sherdog and the Underground and places like that. And that's the fight that people are talking about. So, it's great that they put that together. You know, Bigfoot's last two fights have ended in tough losses. Both Andre Lovsky and Frank Mir have knocked Bigfoot out in the first round. And he hasn't looked the same since returning from his suspension and getting off TRT. Do you think Bigfoot is on the downswing of his career? You know what? I don't think he is. I think he's, um, you know... It, it's easier to to hit someone when they're down, but uh, but when you do that, you know that uh, they're going to come back. They want to come back, 
and um, and this is a fight for him to come back, you know, to, to to try to come back and show that he can, you know, he's still he's still with it, he's still in the game. So, um, you know, he he he'll bring it, he'll bring it in this fight, and, and I'll bring it in this fight, and we're both you know kind of, you know, we've got we both got heavy hands and and stuff. So I don't see this fight going past the first round uh, because he's a knockout. He can he can knock you out at any time as well, you know. And uh, and I can do the same. So, and I'm and I'm looking forward to it. He's a beast, you know. He's big foot. I don't know if he's got seen his hands and his foot. It's like massive. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, but it's, it's good. I'm looking forward to this fight, and I can't wait. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the matchup. So obviously, big big foot is big big wins under his belt against guys like Alistair Overeem and the ever holy Fedor Emelianenko, one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. What are some of the things that you worry about in this matchup from Bigfoot? And tell us some of the advantages that you feel you have in this matchup as well. Um, you know, it's, it goes with everything, every single fight that, that you have. You just got to, you know, be careful and and uh, and and, and kind of obviously play it out at the start and see see where they're at, see where your range is at, and, and distance is very important as well. But you know he's uh, he's the same height as me. He's got long arms, long legs. So I'll be expecting um, I'll be expecting him to come out and bring it, especially being in his hometown. And he you know he's going to want to come out and impress as well. And um, but uh, yeah, like I said, you know we, we we're both going to be going in there for either a knockout or for a win. So um, but I don't see this going past the first round by either of us. Now, like we mentioned before, so you were on an 11-fight win streak prior to the Jared Rocholt fight, a win over Bigfoot Silver in his hometown. Do you think you regain your momentum, and how close would you see yourself to getting a title shot? You know, I'm not, not I am just want to get past this fight at the moment, and then, um, you know, title shot maybe in the, in the near future, but this will certainly give me a, a leg up uh, getting past Bigfoot. Um, you know, and uh, that's a that's a massive scalp. You know, especially him beating my my, my idol Fedor, and mm. you know, and that. So, um, and he's no he's, the Bigfoot's no slouch. You know, so it's going to be a tough, tough fight. But uh, you know, I'm going to go in there with my game plan. My my team is going to you know, be watching his stuff and and see if you know where where we can get find some weaknesses and stuff like that in in, in him, and then we can uh, hopefully expose it and, and and see where we go from there. Well, let's talk about your team for a second. Obviously, you train with the great Mike Quick Swick over there at AK Thailand. You also train around Australia as well. Where will you be doing the majority of your camp for this one? I'll be doing the majority of the camp back in, in Thailand. So that's where I'll be doing my, um, my my camp with them guys. So it's an awesome awesome camp. Um, you know, there was two guys there, um, two heavyweight uh, wrestlers. Amir Akbari, you got to watch out for this guy. This guy is... You know he'll make USC and, and uh, make top top five very quickly. He's a Iranian wrestler. He's a two-time gold medalist, um, and he will. Uh, yeah, he's crazy. And the other guy, Masood, he's a he's a. They're both heavyweights, and he, Masood's a boxer and, and a t- high-level uh, freestyle wrestler. So having these guys at that at that camp, and not only on top of that, you've obviously got uh, Thailand, as you know, Thailand's is known for their Muay Thai and, and stand-up. So that's perfect for me. And and uh, you know, just getting up in the morning, training, and then come back come back home, sleeping, get up, train. So that's all you basically do there. And it's perfect for cutting weight and uh, and the food you eating food is it's clean food and and it's a great facilities AK Thailand and, and is, is unbelievable I don't know if you've seen pictures but uh, when yeah. you do have, check it out because uh, it's, it's unbelievable and if I'm in if I'm in Sydney I, um, I've got a gym there called Hulk MMA and Fitness um, in Sydney in Warwood um, so if anyone's in there check it, check that out I, I, I use that gym when I'm in Sydney if not um, um, I just you know keep travelling and uh, keep in a um, travelling Woolbury Awesome. I actually didn't know that you had the gym in Sydney, so that's good to know. And of course, my quick sweep, we've had him on the show, I think, like four times now. We always talk about AK Thailand. We always see the photos, and it looks like an absolute paradise. You know, since your last fight and your last big win against Walt Harris, what have you been working on? We remember you mentioning that uh, wrestling was a big focus for you. Yeah, wrestling's a, always a big thing, especially in re- especially in the UFC. You know, you, you're wrestling against, you're fighting against a lot of top wrestlers. And if you can kind of hold that, hold that back with, um, you know, kind of keeping... You know, keeping that at A1, and, and, and that's the good thing about AK Thai and everything there. You, it's all like top notch, great coaches, great Brazilian Jiu Jitsu coaches, coaches as well, great stand up coaches, great sparring partners, and that as well. So, I mean, after the Walt Harris fight, I uh, 
I still, you know, kind of still went back to the drawing board. You always, you always can, can improve, you know, especially from that, that last fight. I think, you know, I, I can improve more from that, that fight as well. And, uh, yeah, but, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I just want to take it as day by day, by day fight by fight and uh, keep climbing. Yeah, for sure. Now, I guess the, the question that a lot of fans are wondering, and hopefully you could clarify this for us, so is it has been a while in between fights. You'll be fighting in August. You last fought in Sydney, and I believe that was you know quite a while back. Why the big break in between fights? Was it deliberate, or was, did you, were you dealing with some injuries there? Yeah, I just kind of... Uh... I had, I had some injuries after the war. Well, obviously, in Milwaukee, I broke my rib the week before um, the Kryla fight, and um, I still fought on it, and uh, it popped in the first round. I mean, it already popped anyway, and it's popped again. And, and, uh, and you know, a rib takes takes a long time to, to heal, and then I, I did the, the fight with Pat Barry, and he was still kind of niggling, and then I, you know, after Pat Barry, I did the um, one in Cincinnati, and I thought, after the Cincinnati fight against Ron Potts, I thought, I'll, I'll give it a rest, and... Uh, you know, give maybe like four months or five months rest, and then they said, "Look, you know, the New Zealand fight against Jared Rashad." I thought, "Oh, damn!" Mm. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, so um, and that was really quick. I think that was a like six-week turnaround. Wow! And then um, and I thought, oh, "Okay, well, let's okay, we'll, we'll do it again." And so then I kind of didn't have much time to, you know, kind of rest and 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 train in the proper wrestling camp. And I thought after that after that loss, I thought never again. So then I, um, aka Thailand, made that my home and. Uh, um, and got some, you know, some good sparring partners and that there, and uh, and yeah, making sure that my uh, my fitness levels, conditioning levels, that it's, it's at its peak. But and I've still got a lot more to improve. Um, but uh, but definitely being at uh, AK Thailand has uh, has taken me to the next level. Yeah, and speaking of sparring partners, you know, given your background with Mark Hunt and the fact that Mark has fought Bigfoot before, will you be getting any tips or advice from the Super Samoan? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him for a few, for a few, you know, for some advice and stuff. But you know, Mark, Mark, you know, he, <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't really care if who he steps in 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 the cage with, mm. um, because if he hits you, you better you better come prepared and better make sure your 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 chin is cemented to your head because if he'll take <laughs> he'll take that off and um, you know. But I've got a team that will watch and and go through and and making sure we tidy up my stand up and and stuff because um the the problem with bigfoot he can stand he can throw hands he can throw kicks he can uh he's you know his ground game and yeah i don't think he's he's shown his ground game and it'd be good if it did go to ground we both got we're both brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts and i'm sure we will you know we can both tangle on the bottom and and then if we stand up we can both throw so you know it'd be good good match up yeah, you're, you're an accomplished grappler. You've won a whole bunch of grappling competitions, so that would be very, very interesting. Now, I guess the big thing about this fight, so, is it will be happening in Brazil, and it's Antonio's sort of home turf. How do you feel about going into Brazil, having all these Brazilians sort of booing and going against you? They're very passionate for their country, man. How do you feel about fighting there? Also, we've had a lot of fighters come on the show that don't really want to fight in Brazil because there's some uh, dodgy judges' decisions. So, so a few dodgy things happen there. Any of those are a concern to you going into this one? You know what? And that's the thing. Um, dodgy decisions and stuff like that. Like Dana White says, you know, um, don't leave it in the judges' hands, or um, you know, go in there and uh, and give it and and finish the fight, and that's what I do, um, and I'm sure that's what uh, Big Silver does. He likes to go in there and finish his fighters fights as well. So, um, fighting in a, in in, the, in his hometown, it doesn't really bother me. I think, you know, whether they cheer for me or not, it doesn't really bother me. I think it's the atmosphere. It's the um, they're so uh, Brazilian people are so energetic. Good vibes, good energy. I like that, and and that will, will will come. You know, I'll get a bit of that energy as well, and I'll feel good and and stuff. Whether it going against me or, or not, I don't, I don't really it doesn't really bother me. I don't care. It's just another fight, you know. And and I'm sure it's, it's with Bigfoot as well. It's another fight for him. And we just go in there, do our job. After that, we shake hands and um, and have a few beers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely so. Now we're going to round off the interview with something we call the Submission Radio Tap Out Round. It's basically where we throw a whole bunch of fun questions at you and you answer with the first thing that comes to mind, kind of like word association. So you ready, Soa? Oh, let's do it. All right. Seeing as you're the Hulk, who has been your favorite Hulk so far? You got Eric Banner, Edward Norton, or Mark Ruffalo? Mark. Now, so you come up with a lot of inspirational quotes on Twitter. Do you come up with those yourself and give us your favorite one? Uh, sure do. I come up with that. Uh, man, I've got so many. Um, my, <laughs> my, my favorite one is, uh, 
in three words, I can sum up everything I've learned about life. It goes on. So that's life. Wow. Keeps going. Keep going forward. Wow. Well, no wonder you were actually signed to Penguin Books. And is it true that you've got your autobiography coming out around November this year? Yes, uh, around yep November. So we, we'll, we're you know in the middle of writing it. So um, can't wait. Yeah, that's right. You should put this interview in there. You know, just as a part of the book. Had a great time <laughs> yeah. with the boys. Yeah, now. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna, I was going to change the name, guys, just so you guys don't get, uh, you know, get don't get stalked. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if you're still looking for someone to write the forward for you, mate, you know, you can always contact me. I don't really know you very well, but I'll put in a good one for you. Now, tell us about Sower's Song of the Week. What's the Song of the Week, and will there be a Sower Song of the Year? The Song of the Week is uh, Josh Turner, your man. Oh, yeah. What about the Song of the Year? Will there be a Song of the Year at the end of 2015? It's the same song. Baby, so it's always Josh Turner. Turn the light down low. Put some music on it soft and slow. And baby, we ain't got no place to go. I hope you understand. That's yeah, amazing. Was- I did not expect <laughs> singing from this interview. I feel like I feel like you got penguin books, you got the UFC contract, you're gonna be on you're gonna be on X Factor soon, is that correct? <laughs> so <laughs> I just waiting for for Sony. Make sure you tag Sony in this so uh see if we can get a deal happening with Sony. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, give us your prediction. Mark Hunt versus Stipe Miocic next weekend. Who's winning and how? I think it's going to be a hard fight, but uh, I think Mark's going to come on top and come out with a KO. Now, name one dream opponent from past or present that you'd love to fight. It could be anybody. We're talking about dream matchups here. Okay, a, a, a fight that I have fought or... No, that you'd like. So it could be anybody in the heavyweight division. If you could choose one person to fight, it could be any superstar from past to present. Who's one name that you'd really want to fight? It doesn't matter if they're heavyweight. Uh, it doesn't well, matter. It could be anyone. You can, it could go, be you can, go, if you want. You can get the women's okay. division if you want. That's fine <laughs> right. yeah. Okay, I want to... Theodore. Because he's really okay. my idol. I would love to... I would just love to test myself against him. And uh, just... Uh, this is, he's, I've, I've always... Uh, I'm a massive fan of... Uh, Theodore and, and, uh, and BJ Penn, but uh, yeah, love, love them guys. Absolutely. Well, the good thing is he's a heavyweight, so that could happen. Well, if he was yeah. still fighting, if you beat Antonio Bigfoot Silver, what are the chances you'll be gunning for a high profile fight at UFC 193 in Melbourne? I don't know. Um, I, you know, obviously, you, you know, I mean, all the boys in, in, in Australia will want to be getting on that that fight card, and, and there'll be a massive fight card, especially in Etihad Stadium, where it potentially could open up to 80,000 people. So, wow. um, to, to fight in that arena just with the whole Aussie fans, that'd be awesome. Finish this sentence for us, Soa. People don't know that I. People don't know that I. I'm the best singer in the world. <laughs> well, the good thing is, once they listen to this interview, they'll know that. You've got a solid uh, solid statement. Finally, so a last question. Finally, give us the official prediction. How do you plan on beating Antonio Bigfoot Silva at UFC 190? Oh, we're going to arm wrestle first. <laughs> yeah. And then we're going to go buffet table, and I'm going to beat him at the buffet table. And I'm going I'm to eat the old buffet table and eat his plate as well. I think, uh, you know, we're going to... Um, it's a secret, but... Uh, we're going to go out there and uh, and uh, put the game plan together and uh, and uh, and go from there. There you go, guys. So Palale is going to eat Bigfoot Silver alive. You can check out Soa and his weekly show, Hulk Talk, on his Twitter, at Soa the Hulk. And, of course, watch him take on Bigfoot Silver at UFC 190. It's August the 1st. Soa, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Cool. Thanks, guys. 